Nickelodeon. What's up, son? Daughter? Male? Female? Other? Brother? Ain't no... Southern? Not a rapper. Okay, so today we're going to do problem 753, cracking the safe. Now, this is a graph problem that I've skipped over like 12 times, but now that I've solved most of the graph problems, I'm going to just kind of have to accept that I'm going to have to uh, uh, approach this problem. Now, to be completely transparent, I have kind of already looked over this, and I think I know what to do now, but... Uh, but uh, nothing. Let's just get right into it. So we're cracking the safe. My life ain't so great. Don't hate, appreciate. 345 likes. That reminds me, like and subscribe, dude. Just do it. Like and subscribe to my channel. Like, I know you're watching this right now and you're like, dude, can you get in the problem? I'll get to the problem. But just like and subscribe. Please, I, I, I need you to do it. Just... Hit the like button, hit the dislike button, hit it twice, and then hit the like button another two times, okay? Cracking the safe. So there's a safe protected by a password. The password is a sequence of n digits where each digit can be in the range 0 to k minus 1. Okay, the safe has a peculiar way of checking the password. When you enter a sequence, it checks the most frequent, recent n digits that were entered each time you type a digit. For example, if the password's 345 and you enter 0, okay, the most recent digit, three digits is 0, 1, the most recent three digits is 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, uh, 5, 3, 4, 5, which is correct and locks the safe. Okay, so when you look at a password for any string, you can imagine like at some point you enter 2. So then the only things that are considered are 0, 1, 2, and then after that you enter 3, so 1, 2, 3 are considered, and then 2, 3, 4, and then 3, 4, 5, right? Because the most recent n, where n is 3. Return any string of minimal length that will lock the safe at some point of entering it. Okay. So for n equals 1 and k equals 2, so the password can only be one digit, then it's one zero will work, so that's kind of a silly example. All right, this one's a little better. N equals 2, K equals 2. So if someone enters 0 and then 1, the password system will check 0, 1. And then if you enter 1, it'll check 1, 1. And then if you enter 0, it'll check 1, 0. And then if you enter 0 again, it'll check 0, 0. Right, and that's a combination of all possible 0, 1 combinations, right? Because, right, if you have um, N equals 2, K equals 2, right? What are the possible passwords you could have? Well, 0, 0 could be the password, 0, 1 could be the password, 1, 0 could be the password, or 1, 1 could be the password, right? That's just an exhaustion, right? That's a brute force of all possible passwords. So in this problem, we're really trying to find a brute force solution, a brute force string, right? A string that has every possible um, passwords in it. And is of minimal length, right? So if we wanted to make this thing a situation where we could just look at, well, we have zero, zero, so we can catch that one. And then we have zero here. So if we just put the one there, that will capture that. Right? And then one, one, well, if we have one here, and then, okay, one, zero, one, zero here. All right, so this is another, this is also a possible solution, not the one that's listed there right because zero zero is captured zero one's captured one one's captured one zero same here right so these are also possible solutions right zero one one zero 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 one is captured here one one is captured here one zero is captured here zero zero is captured here and i just undid it but yeah, whatever so you get the point right it's the same dealio so how do we find that minimum path um, well, one thing is, is something you're going to have to notice about this problem, and this is kind of like a statistical truth. This is, this is intuition you'd probably gain if you've taken a statistics class, right? That there's, well, there's n to the k possible passwords. 
Well, why is that the case? Or is n to the k or k to the n? Now I don't even know. Well, if we had a pro situation where k equals 3. Maybe it's k to the n. Ah! Well, let's see. Let's see. k equals 3 and n equals... Uh, n equals 2. So it's a 2-length password, right? So we don't know what the password is, but let's create these two slots. And how many things could it be... Here, it could be three things here, right? And it could be three things here. Another way of saying this, just in more general speech, right, is like there's n slots, and each slot can be k. Right? So that's not n to the k, but k to the n. I apologize. But see, that's why you work through these problems, because sometimes you might just have a bad understanding of uh, statistics like I did. I do, did, did, do, done, and always have. So if you kind of just walk through the problem a little bit, maybe that'll help you kind of discover what it's actually supposed to be, right? So it's KN times, right? So it could be K things here, K things here, for whatever number of slots. So that's K to the N possible passwords, not N to the K, right? So when we look at this example, right? There's four possible passwords. There's 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. So we need to build this string where... Each of the k to the n possible passwords are captured. So what would be the length of that string? Right? Well, we have one password, right, which is of length n. And then every time we do an, ad an additional operation, we get a password that's, let's make this a little bit better. So let's imagine this is our n length password, our first try. And then when we add, when we try an additional digit, right? When we try an additional digit, there's going to be another password of also length n that reuses the the last n minus one possible pa uh, inputs, right? So like with this example. 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, right? So we have k equals 2, n equals 2, um, and then k to the n equals 4, right? Because 2 squared equals 4. Okay, so you have this first password of link 2, then you have this second password of link 2, and the third password of link 2, and this fourth password of link 2, right? So the length of our solution then is also what? Uh, well, it doesn't really matter. Well, it doesn't matter. Because if it was three, let's just do another example. Let's say that it was three here. Sorry, I'm just thinking in my head how we know the length. How do we know what the length of this password's gonna be? Because for each, for each, ah, thinking out loud here. This is why it's so hard. It's hard to think out loud, but you gotta do it for interviews. I feel like if I could just not talk, I could probably think through this. But you create your first password of link three, or let's, ugh. What's going on? Create your first password of link two, subsequent password of link two. So you have to do this because it's K to the N. K to the N. K to the end. Oh. Hmm. How many times do you have to do this? So. So 
So this will, there's K to the N passwords, right? And this is one of them. So my intuition is telling me that you have to do this. You have to find, K, so if you have to find K to the N passwords, and this is one of the passwords. Okay, yeah, so there's, sorry. So there's K to the N passwords, right? So this is one of the passwords. This is another password. This is another password. This is another password. So you create, so I don't even know what the length is, but I know that the minimal length will be you find the first password, you save that information. So you have to do some process K to the N times. So K to the N passwords means you do K to the N operations. So, so I'm thinking how this works is like, we'll start with a password for this example, zero, zero. And then we're going to just try to find a path where we exhaust all passwords. And to exhaust all passwords means that you find all K to the N passwords. So there's K to the N passwords you need to find. So where can you go from here? Well, since K is two, that means that the only place you can go from this state is zero or one. Now you might try to go you might try to go to zero and that would mean that your password is now, or er, let's, I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna start with the case. Okay, so let's say you start with zero, zero. The reason why I'm doing this is because, well, the password starts here, it will be zero. Then the current password you're gonna try is zero, zero here. Now this looks like a one. Ugh. Jesus. This is my terrible video. Zero, zero. Now from this state, let's just say you start here at this state. You can either do one or you can do zero. All right? So let's say first you try, let's see, we try zero. Well, if we got to this state, what would our password now be? It would be zero, zero. But we've already, we've already found that. So let's say we had a ledger where we kept stuff we already found. So we've already found zero, zero. So if we try to go to this state and get to zero, zero again, because it's gonna check the last two things, we're gonna be like, okay, no, this doesn't work. So then we go here and now our password is zero, one, right? And if our password is zero, one, then we check, okay, have we already seen zero, one? No, so we go zero, one here. And then where can we go from one? Well, again, it's the same thing, right? You can always go to zero, or you can go to one. So you try to go here. You say, okay, what's my password now? It's one, one, right? Because it's the last two things you checked. And I check my ledger. Have I seen one, one? No. So I add that to my ledger. Okay. And then from here I can go to, um, same thing again. I can go to one or I can go to zero. If I from here tried to go to one, I'd be at one one, so that doesn't work, right? Because I've already done one one. Or I can go here to one zero, which does work. So I add that to my system here. So then my string, well, how do I know I've terminated now? Well, have I gone through K to the N, which is four operations, right? So I have the first password here, the second password here. We'll do that a little different. All right, so I found the first password here. I discarded the bottom one, so I don't do it. Second password here, third password here, fourth password here. So I found four passwords. So that means that I'm done, right? Because I've looked at all possible combinations of passwords. And then that means that my string is then just this path. Right? So this path generates my string, which is zero, zero, one, zero. So zero, zero, one, one, zero. 
and that's a possible solution to this problem. Okay, so that's pretty much what we're going to do with this problem. We're just going to have a state and then possible places we can go. And if that possible place generates the solution, then we run with it. If not, we discard it. So here I, I saved information about what I've seen so far. So I'll have a scene, which is a set, which will always reference the things that I've seen to make sure that I don't go down paths like this right, where I've already got that answer. And then here we have this kind of um, solution, but what we can do is we can just create one string and as we traverse, we build it, right? So cur is zero here, and then cur is zero, zero here, and then cur is zero, zero, one here, and then cur is, uh, then cur becomes zero, zero, one, one here. And then finally here, it becomes zero, zero, one, one, zero. And every time I do a traversal, I just look at the last n digits. And when I finally get to a state where I've found every possible problem, I just return cur. Okay. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and just do that. Okay. So of course the traversal I just did was DFS. Um, so we'll create DFS here. Um, I had the thing cur, we had seen, right? Seen was the things that I've seen so far. And then we'll call this total for the total number of, uh, er, uh, we'll call it, mm, yeah, total's fine, total. Total things we have to do. So if we're in a position where, We want to look at the last n digits of the cur string that we're building. And if that's in scene, we return nothing. Because if it's already in scene, we don't want to go down that path, right? That's like the case here, right? When we go down this path to scene, if we've already seen the, the last n digits of cur, that means that we've already found something that, that, uh, handles this path. So we don't need to consider it. We can just discard it. Otherwise we'd say, okay, cur, we'll look at each possible digit. So how many digits are there? Well, there's zero to K minus one. So we'll call that the neighbor V or we'll just call it a character. It's really a character C. Um, so if we haven't seen this state, then we should add it to our, uh, set, right? Because this is the, this is the, the last end. So we've just seen this new solution. So we, if we don't want to consider it again in the future, we should add it now. Um, and then where do we go from here? Well, we'll look at each neighbor. So this is really a neighbor. So that's a, so the, the, the neighbors curve. So next equals DFS of cur plus C. So if we appended cur to C, uh, sorry, I'm just trying to think about how we do this. Somewhere in here, we need to also check if length of scene equals total, then we return her. Because that means that we've, we've exhausted all possible solutions. So if next, 
So if we traverse down an additional path and it finds a solution, then we return cur plus next. Yeah, but you don't want to back build. All right. Otherwise, we just keep checking because something could not. Um, hmm. Will this work? So I I traverse down with the new cur, cur plus c. So cur will only get returned if it gets the total. It gets the total, that'll be next, and then next will have something to return. Otherwise, it'll return nothing. If this doesn't work, then it'll return nothing. So let's return DFS. of z well, So we'll start with an empty string of zero times a length of n, right? Because that was the starting state. We'll just start at zero always. Um, scene will just be an empty set, which will get filled, and then we have k to the n possible solutions. Oh, length of n, n is already, sorry, foolish of me. Curve plus string, c, it's fine. Kind of annoying, but it's fine. All right, let's try that. It seemed kind of slow for what it was, but memory limit exceeded. Yikes. Oh, negative N onwards. You don't want that blowing up, right? Because we want to add the new password, which is the last N things. Okay, so we have zero, zero. Okay, so length of scene equals total, but it's not the right length. So how does that happen? Total should be four, so it's... Here it's zero. Okay, so it's zero, then it's one, then it's two. So let's print out scene. So I'm just doing some debugging here because I'm trying to see why Current total don't agree. Okay, so it's all here. Zero, zero. One, zero is not there, though. One, one. Oh. Okay, so the problem is, is that when this runs... It could go down a path that doesn't find a solution, and then at the end, it's going to end up adding. Um, it's going to add things that aren't actually going to be in the final path, right? So the problem with my solution here is, if you had a situation, so say you had a system that like branched off, it had all these branches, whatever, right? So let's imagine that the final solution ends up being this path, right? But let's say at some point you were running this and it started going down this path, but then it got stuck. So it got stuck going down this path. So values got populated into scene, even though our final path ends up going down this route. 
right? So although it's supposed to go down this route, it ends up adding things at these intermediate nodes that shouldn't be in the system. All right, so things get added to scene that aren't actually in our final path, right? Because we're trying to really find a path through this tree and uh, a path can't like, we can't like traverse like this, right? A path has to be just straightforward. So if we add something we're not supposed to add, we need to remove it, right? If something isn't so, in a solution and it gets added, it needs to get removed. So we would say scene remove All right, if it gets to the end, and right, if it gets here, that means it went through all of its neighbors and it didn't find anything. So we need to remove that from the solution. It's no longer a case. There you go. So that's the, ah, dude, it feels so nice to be able to finally solve this problem. You guys have no idea. Right, because the thing is we're trying to find a path through this graph where we have these neighboring K nodes. Um, so you can't like, if we go down this path and it doesn't end up working out, we need to remove what we've added so far. All right. Kind of like, Kind of topological sorty, not kind of, it has, has a flavor to it. All right, cool. Just thinking about if there's anything else. So what's the runtime of this? Well, it's n to the k, right? Because you, this thing never gets bigger than n to the k space. And then we have n to the k operations, right? Right, we literally build scene to be n to the k. So there's n to the k space, and the runtime is based on that space. So it's n to the k space, n to the k uh, runtime. And that's not a problem because here, right, this problem, again, this is another problem where it indicates that there's a very inefficient solution because look at how small these variables are, right? Less than 4,096 operations. All right, peace out.